I'm Noah Nerd and welcome to this tutorial on creating a simple solar system 3D visualization project with Play Canvas. So hopefully this one goes right this time because I just did it and then forgot to record the audio properly so it happens. But um, I'll talk to you through what we're going to do. We're going to do create a 3D uh, sort of mini game thing. Uh, or the basics of how to set that up with Play Canvas. Uh, it'll be like a scene of a sun and a planet or two. We won't do all the planets because uh, just lots of setting up stuff, but I'll show you how to set up a sun, how to get that so it rotates, also a planet, and um, obviously when you approach each planet, it shows you the type of planet and the title of the planet. So it should be pretty interesting. And um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. So without further ado, let's crack on. So this is what we're going to create in a nutshell. So we're going to create, we won't do everything, but we're going to have solar system. You can fly around, you can approach objects. This is the sun. Approach Mercury, maybe. It shows the different types of planets, what type they are, and the title of Jupiter there. So we've got a player control there, a HUD, and some text that changes. So nothing too complicated. Um, like I said, I had a little bit of a technical hitch before, so I'm going to have to do this for the second time again. The third time, actually, now. But, um, ah, well. It uh, helps someone, will have something to refer to anyway. So let's go to projects. Let's do uh, solar system. To so we'll go to new project first. We're going to create a blank project. And solar system tutorial free. Uh, so I'm going to make it private because I don't want to share this with anyone else. Really. There will be a, you'll be able to access the full thing though, some of the original project I made, which is here. This is it. We're going to go through it bit by bit on how to set up the basic scene in general. So let's go to editor first. Also, I'll be, there's an asset pack with this tutorial, so I'll attach that as a zip, downloadable zip as well, so you'll have all the assets ready. So we've got a scene. I'm not going to cover play canvas um, layout and UI and everything. It's pretty simple. I don't think they should go over that. This is more of an advanced play canvas tutorial either way. So yeah, so I'm navigating on the scene. I've got just a light plane in the box in there. I'm going to take all that stuff out. Uh, I don't even need the camera really for now. Actually, I do need it. I'll, do, I'll, I'll keep that in there for now. So let's create some folders for our assets. Textures first, and we're going to need a font. I just forgot that the first time around, so it's good to remember that one. We're going to have a model folder. We're going to use spheres generally for the planets, but there is Saturn, of course. So if you want to use that, you can use that. We might not cover that, but just so you know. Um, um, yeah. Let's just upload our textures first before we do anything else. Upload. Got this little folder here somewhere. This is this will be new zip. Textures planet and just select everything for now. Open. And I guess the first thing we're gonna want to do is let's add a model that represents the sun. So let's do that. So go to the root. A new entity, which creates a new um, entity, which we can, which is useful for. I'm going to call it sun, and we're going to have the following components. So components in, when you create a new entity, basically, are different um, parts you can use to give the uh, model or the object some. Um, Features, I guess. I don't know, it's hard to describe, obviously. So, we're going to go sphere. Uh, we're going to give it also 
rigid body and collision, which we'll go into later, having to import more ammo for collision detections, which she does automatically, which is nice. Next, you want to create a material. So we go sun, matte, or something like that. Then we scroll down here on the right hand side to diffuse. Select that little arrow there, edit icon, sun, PNG. So um, there's probably a lot more you can do with this, like in terms of like uh, making it more sun-like, but um, for now it's fine. So let's add our, we've created this new material called sun material now. Let me select it, sun mat, and you'll see you've got this cube around the sun, tiny sun, and um, it's got a texture applied to it. So it's quite nice. You probably want to scale it up, it's not very big at the minute, so scale. Mm -hmm. Make it bigger. And then we want to, so you saw that before the collision type was a box, so you don't want that, we want a sphere, because this is a sphere. I'm gonna round this up a bit. So five, scaling the X, Y, and Z axis. So done that. So the X, Y, and Z, Z uh, scale, scaling's been done. And um, for the boundary box, we wanna make it half of that. So the radius is 2.5 which will help us with collisions. Okay, so we've got a sun. If I click play now, you will see. There we go, we've got a little sun in there. Doesn't do much at the minute, it's very lonely, but um, it's there. So it looks a bit bland, doesn't it, with that gray background. So let's add uh, another folder here called um, to a uh, skybox, you will add a skybox to the scene. Skybox is basically um, a sort of material which we can apply to the, the background of the scene uh, as a, with a cube map. And I'm just going to upload all that stuff. This all, like I said, this is all in the, uh, it's in the background. So you can use different ones, but I'm going to use this one because it's just the generic space sort of one. It's called balloon. And I'm uploading it back from. Um, up, down, like sort of all the different faces of the cube, which we can use to uh, create a cube map, which is what we'll do next. And I'll walk you through the process of doing that. So then we go new asset, and we go cube map, and call this space sky. And then we go to the faces. So I've labeled them all in the uh, assets. So you've got top, so they're all pretty easy to know, front, Right, literally the only thing you can do wrong is click on the wrong one. Back, which, oh, not that one. I could just attend back and bottom. Okay, so now we've got a cube map, which is like a unfolded cube, which we can apply to the scene. So we go to a scene, it's currently called the title, I call it space scene. I go to uh, rendering. Okay, so there's this rendering here, go to Skybox, click that little button, and select that, and lo and behold, I think if I refresh it this time actually, we'll have some space in the background. Hopefully, if it works, it's taken a while or something. There we go, so now we've got a, some space. Doesn't really do much at the minute. Uh, I mean, I guess really we want our sun to rotate to it, so let's create a new script for the rotation of the sun and also we need to set that up for a bunch of other stuff later on as well so let's do that so we go to my entity we add a component this component will be called uh so we'll just stick to the same naming convention as before sorry so just check this quickly orbit planet in camel case so if i go back here and just like orbit planet like that that then creates a new script for us. I'm going to create a new folder called scripts, just to be tidy. No, not that. It's just here, scripts. Oh, no, not that. Here, select the folder, scripts. And we're going to shift that orbit planet into scripts. Just so it's all tidy, basically. Okay, so we'll go back to my sun, select on the left hand side. And let's go into the code editor for uh, play counts. 
But I mean, if you're familiar with playground, this will be familiar, but I'll just go quickly go through this. We have a variable called the planet, which we use to um, run a few different functions. So initializes something that's called once when the entity is booted up, basically. Update, which is called every frame. So that's like every second or something. So basically all we want to do, so this is the finished script, but for now we just want to do uh, this. So, you know, you recall I said earlier that update runs every like second. So we're going to, using the this keyword, you grab this entity and then rotate it a little less than this because that's very fast. Uh, so this entity rotate, this is the x-axis, you can see here it shows you x-axis, y-axis and z-axis. Now we want it to rotate on the y-axis every second by 2, 0 0.2 inches. So if I save that and I press play, oh I don't need to put any to press play anyway, but it doesn't matter. We have our little rotating sun, so that looks a bit more alive now, it's a bit more like something that's vaguely interesting. There's a light source in this as well, which you can probably play around with too, but I don't know, need to consider that. Okay, so we've got that. The next big step is to get a player controller in here. Now for this uh, sort of prototypal solar system project, I've just used the standard uh, um, play canvas, which you can get from the player controller. There are ways in the first person in the controller. You can, you can, you can um, do more advanced things with this. It probably could be made more advanced, but basically, if you follow this example, then it will, you'll be able to do it basically. So I want to quickly open this. This is the, wait, what? Oh, I accidentally deleted it last time. My bad, it's a good thing we couldn't put Control Z there. Okay, so this is our first person. Like I said, it's basically just uh, it's a copy of the of the one they have as a tutorial. So there's nothing going on in this that you wouldn't have encountered already in another first person movement controller. But I'll quickly go over it. Um, we have attributes that we can add in Play Canvas, which is very useful for uh, sort of having changeable. Um, Changeable sort of attributes <laughs> that we can that we can uh, apply to our script instances. So, for example, we've got power here. And if I was to create another instance of this, I can create. I can add a different attribute value. It's defaulted to a value two thousand five hundred in this case. But if I was to create another first person movement um, controller, then I could change that to another value in the in the UI, which is quite useful actually. Uh, and then there's a bunch of masks. There's a bunch of stuff which was beyond this, like keyboard listeners, listening for keyboard movements, and it sort of all explains it. So I'm just going to copy this actually. I know that's a classic tutorial thing, but so what we want to do, we want to go player. I'm going to create a new entity called player. So we'll go player. I'm going to go script. And it's just first. I'm using camel case, I think. Just double check. Yeah. First, first person movement. And we're going to go create a script, which will create a new script. I want to move that from here. Well, I think it just auto does it to each other. So we're here, edit. And I'm just going to paste. But like I said, this is basically. Just a pure copy of the first boom, move, first person movement controller. Nothing too complicated on that, but you'll see when I refresh, something bad happens. So, oh, I need to add a collision as well, but uh, let me just do that quickly. So, we've got the player there. I also need to add a collision. I always forget to use the collision and the rigid body. So, you know what? We want to make the, the body's dynamic because the, the player can move. So we'll add that as well, and we've got a, it's, it could be a box for now, I'll just move this guy, move the position of the player, I don't want him right bang in the middle of the sun, I'll move that, 
And now I should be falling. There we go. So obviously we are in zero gravity, but the planet's gravity currently is set to Earth's gravity. So if we go to space scene again, we've got this tab called physics. And we basically want it to be zero. We don't want any gravity because we're in zero gravity. We're not in on Earth, we're in zero grav. So there you go. And obviously I go really fast because my power is my power level is too high. Over nine thousand and all that. But uh, yeah, you'll see now locating. I just do that there. You can see that I'm going way too fast because the power level is too fast. But we can sort of move around or move around with the WCD. Let's reduce that power level. So you know, you remember I said before about adding attributes. So if I just pass the script by clicking that sort of what looks like a retweet button actually, and I add power, and I think I'm going to add about twelve, so about a lot less. And then if we refresh this again. And then we should see that I move a lot slower now because the power um, is less for doing it. So yeah, you know, I'm moving it a little bit more than snail's pace, which is good. I think. And I think so. Yeah, it's, you'll see there that when I knock into the sun, I sort of go off and whoa. that's because of the linear factor basically. So if I go, so I have a, I think I've got a collision setup on this in the rigid body on the player controller, but. If I move this at a certain speed, it can yeah, it can sort of screw things up. But there you go. See, rolling, 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 rolling. So I want to reduce my angular factor. Sorry, to zero. Not linear factor. Move that to zero. So angular factor. Uh, I'm not a physics buff, but basically it just stops that happening. Uh, so if we go play again, set the angle, all the angular factors to zero. If I now knock into that, I'm not going to go flying off into it. It'll be all like rolling around. It basically stops you from the, cam the camera from rolling around too much. Like I said, it's still not perfect, but you can sort of get a bit more control. One thing that can be improved with this thing is, like I said, this is only setting up for the basics, is to uh, just tweak the physics, mess around with it. It's not perfect by any stretch of imagination, but I'm going to also add a camera because this is important later. It's like I do already have a camera set up um, and it does all, it doesn't, well, I mean, it automatically adds one if you don't have a little tape for the original camera. It does add, add one automatically to the player controller if you don't have it, but this, setting it up manually like this will become apparent when we need to do that later. It's for UI reasons, basically. So let's just check that all works. Go to this again. Good thing about Playground is you can go back and forth between the editor and the preview, which is quite nice. And there we go. So we've got, we've got now we've got a sun, and we can sort of travel around in the space environment, zoom around at our leisure. So we've got a sun, it rotates. Pretty cool, I guess. Okay, so we've got some basic physics set up there now, so that's good. So we'll see in the original example, we've sort of got a UI. We have um just close this down. We have um a uh, sort of UI over the front of it, which is like a, a panel. So I'll add a new folder which I've I've pre not here. Uh, I've pre um have a pre-made UI HUD interface which you can use, which is useful. So I'll get that. It's just called it's just we don't know the difference now. Um, I'll just put it here for some of the user wants. So we're going to set up a new entity called user interface, a 2D screen. And we're also going to set up, well, this might be a bit tricky, fiddly, so I might screw it up, but hopefully not. We add an image element to the camera. So note that I'm doing it under the camera. <coughs> the 2D screen will need for um, text elements, but the image is really what we want to concentrate on. So you see now it's just this huge block of colour, which will probably look very weird. So I'm going to select that texture and just put it in. And then you should see very tinny, or actually probably huge image somewhere. Where is it? Where have you gone? This is where it gets fiddly. From what I remember. So scale one, okay. Yeah, let's just check something. Just 
compare this because it's width 10. Oh, that's way too big. And four. So, for some reason I can't see the image, I don't know why. It's probably just some floating there. Oh, there we go, because it's massive. Yeah, it's huge for some reason still to warn us. Yeah, sorry, that was my bad. I should have just left it at one. Let's just move the image to finicky. Uh, I don't think it will work quite yet. This is often thing that can be a bit fiddly at first, and like my implementation is perfect. And it's just imagine this for the purpose of a tutorial, it's probably not there. Okay, so I need to change a few things because um, we can't see it yet, obviously. Um, just you know you can do a back but from what I remember I just had to move it back a bit from the camera so we just done that there we go so it's a bit offset for some reason so I don't know why that is I rotated the camera arm press and that's okay let me check I think I have And you can see it's appearing, but it's not. That's not correct. It should be locked to the camera. Um, it's not much. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Let me just check this. I think I had to probably fit around over here, but it's just add these values I need. I don't know why it's so small anyway. So let's just add these values. When you're doing this, uh, I want to rush through this quite fast, this one copying it, but we'll see if you're in the real world then. Wait, why can't I move? Why oh, can't I move? That's interesting. Ooh, 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 ooh. Oh. Sorry, I've got a bit of a hiccup here. I wonder if that's just happened for me. Oh, I know why. Sorry, um, so player, I have to now select the camera because it's always it's all a great one. So you have to select the specific camera element, otherwise it adds one, basically. I apologize, that was my bad. I just forgot about that part. So now it'll be, yeah, so now it's attached to that camera. And you can see it's a bit too small, but let me just tweak it quickly. So if I go image, that was a bit confusing, sorry, I apologize for that. Make it a bit bigger, like this. There we go, that's probably about right. So now we've got a UI. A hood, as it were, for our spaceship. So let's add a, one planet. We're just gonna add one because once you've added one, you can add them all, really. So let's do that. So I'm just gonna duplicate the sun because it's just faster. Basically, the planet Mercury is gonna be a smaller version of the sun, but so we just and with a lot of the same uh, components. So I'll just make it smaller, basically. You can see that blue sort of sphere around it is the collision box because it's smaller now. So I'll make it one, one, and then make the collision box zero point five. I'm going to call it Mercury to distinguish it from the actual sun. Okay, that's actually all set up now. I'm using Orbit Planet, but um, that's fine. So it all, if I go into it now, it should uh, just we should have two rotating planets. Or well, one sun, sorry, there we go. So I haven't changed the texture yet, but you can see it's rotating. And obviously the next thing we need to do is the texture. So we have two, we have a sun and we have a planet. We just need now the texture. So I need to make a new material. And this is a process you could run through obviously a load of times for creating different planets. Uh, like I said, I don't think there's any point of me uh, going through every single planet because it'll be good till next week. I'll call that the, uh, the, just to be good, I'll call it Merc. And I'll go select this. And I'll go here. And I'll select Merc. Now I've got a texture Mercury planet. Good. Okay, let's check. So you can see the texture switched. So basically, the lap, that's more or less a lot of the stuff set up. Uh, so the next part I want to do is we want to have the thing with. Um, having the when you approach the planet, if I touch it, it will show you the name and the type of the planet. So that's actually not too complicated. We just need to add some stuff to our script. Uh, so orbit planet. Um, you'll notice that 
Uh, oh, and notice more, actually, we're going to add some attributes to that now. We have a title and a planet type, and some other stuff. Uh, so all we've done so far is added this um, update, which retakes the planet. We're going to do a lot more now, basically. I just need to refer to the other version, because it just speeds everything up. So we're going to add these, and I'll explain what I'm doing, because otherwise it's uh, confusing me a bit. So we've got orbit planet, which is this. We're adding an attribute of planet title. So an attribute is an editable, um, I guess, um, thing that I don't know what to describe it as. So, it's like, so basically if I wanted to set up so I can change this planet's name. So it's, you'll notice that the same script is running on two planets, which is good. So there's no, and obviously you could create it so you could do a, a script for each planet, but that would be wasteful, definitely, because you can just add attributes. So for example, it'll make more sense once I've just added these, so I'll just save this. So I've added all the plans. I've added the type, it's a type string, because it's just a uh, bit of text. The default's an empty string. The description is just a description of what it is. And we've done the same for planet type. So that's been done. So now if I go into here, I have to quickly pass this, and I also have to save it. I've, I always have to remember to do that. I do it once. There we go. So we've got these little things here. So your planet type, the planet type. So this is Mercury. So put in Mercury. Uh, Mercury. And it's a terrestrial planet, I think. Which I cannot spell for the life of me. But hopefully this will get it. I can never spell terrestrial off the top of my head anyway, so I just quickly get it off here, just copy and paste it from another version. Okay, terrestrial. Then you'll notice when you go to the sun, it has planet title as well, but there's nothing there because the default of this instance is blank, and this one's Mercury. So like I said, it's a good way of just being able to set unique attributes in each one without having to re redo the same, uh, that's a star, it's not really a planet, but you will. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is you want to add some, an event basically, and collide with the player controller, the player uh, entity. So I'll just quickly bung into this pre-finished one. What we want to do, uh, I'll copy this and then I'll just explain what's going on and sort of walk through the process. So just copy this. So this entity refers to the planet itself, the entity that is being referred to. And then we set up a listener for collision start events. And we set up a listener for contact events. And then we find the player. And that's all that for that bit, actually. So I'm just going to save that. Let's go for the next bit. Okay, and then this is where the actual change will occur, which I'll, we also need to add a text element, which I'll do in a second too. So we're going to add a new function called onContact. You'll see that that's called here. And we need to add a tag called player to the player entity. So let me just quickly walk you through this. So the, if the result has another rigid body, we, remember we added a rigid body to the component. And also has a tag because otherwise it would just fire this event anytime a any uh, rigid body touched it. So I need to add a tag here, which is quite useful for doing these sort of things. So I'm just going to player as well. So this is very useful if you want to identify a specific um, entity for collisions and stuff. So yeah, remember that result of a rigid body and other tags has player. And then these don't exist yet, so let's invent them. Planet title, which and remember they, these need to be very specifically correct. So we're going to add a text element to our UI called planet title and planet type, but they have to definitely be the right name, otherwise they will not work. But let's do that. So to the screen, we'll add the good user interface and give text element, and we're going to call it, remembering that it has to be exactly the same, otherwise it won't work. Planet title where it says name, which is how it identifies it in the, the uh, editor, basically. And I'm going to 
defunished have a def oh I need to add a font. Yeah, I should remember to mention that I always forget. So you need I've added a font here, remember? So the reason I added a font earlier was well I have a font. It's for that reason. So I'm gonna revert to medium. I'll include that in the package it'll be in the folder called the asset pack it'll be in the folder called uh, font. So if I go here now, you can see this text, if I go here, refresh this probably now it should text. This just say text is the default. So it just says text in a minute. Which is not particularly exciting, but it's not really the point. So I'm gonna move this. So if I wanted to shift this around, see in the 2D screen, it's, it's obviously huge as well. Hang on, let me make it a bit smaller. No, that's all right, actually. So if I can move this. There's a screen, so that's the whole screen if you can see that. I'm gonna move it a bit up here. I'm just gonna move it on the side actually for a change. You can move it wherever you want, but and then I wanna Okay, planet title. And then I'll remove this because we don't want it to say anything until we've touched the planet, basically. And now I'm just gonna comment that out for now because I'm not adding type. And let's demonstrate that working, hopefully. So remember, this is, let's go to the sun. Sun, there we go. And if I go to Mercury, Mercury. There is a bit of clipping on the HUD. It's not something I've got around to fixing. So like I said, this is something you can improve upon. Sun, Mercury, Mercury, Sun. And same again for if we want the type. So I'm just gonna copy this. It's basically the same thing, just on the other side. I'm going to call it instead of planet title, planet type. There we go. And I'll just uncomment this line. I'll talk a little bit about what it's doing. So it's finding that text element, element text, and then it's setting it to this attribute, which has been set here called planet title, this planet title, which is the attribute we've set it there. So let's save that. And if I run this again, it should now say, star and terrestrial for type and then approach it there you go terrestrial sun type star and i'll just add a bit of text above and that's basically it so there you go you've created a little bit of a space solar system see my planet type called planet table label just to distinguish it and i'll put planet name just a bit above there we go and then just copy this and call it planet type label again to distinguish it. And whatever really. And text is going to be planet type. Okay. There you go. So that's basically the basic building blocks you need to create the solar um, system project. Uh, obviously you can tweak the physics and stuff, it's not perfect, but um, yeah, it sort of gives you a starting point really. Yeah, uh, also, so, so I'll, I'll just talk, now that's that covered, that's most of what you need to do for the basics. I'll talk about ways you can improve on this, build on it, I mean like I said, it's only a prototype, I don't have a spare time, but it sort of gives you a starting point for where to create a solar system or space scene. And so where you can improve it, the physics can be tweaked. You can add a, uh, so at the minute I can just go off into infinity if I go away. Uh, you can actually, in the original projects I did, I did it so that you could, there were bounding boxes around the, um, the planets and stars. So you couldn't do that, but so basically it blocks you off. Or you could, another way you could approach it is to have it so that you should fly into the sun or something or into a, into a bounding box that just resets your position. Um, but yeah, I, mean, I don't want to fly around too much. It's basically, that's basically it. So that's that. I've been on nerd. Um, obviously, like and subscribe if you like the content. I generally do JavaScript gaming blogs, also web dev videos and stuff. And I think I'll leave it at that really. Uh, so yeah, give the chat, give it a like if you like it. It always helps. I could do a few more uh, viewers and stuff. And, just uh, more love is always good. If it helps you out, let me know as well. If you have any questions, also feel free to ask me. I do try and help people out when they've had problems. So, uh, look, you know, so 1% is not going to be that clear. Uh, that's not really. So, yeah, have a good one.